From Montana's news leader, this is the MTN New News. Good afternoon and thanks for joining us on the new news. I'm Diane Parker. Miller has our weekend forecast, plus a closer look at the impacts of low water levels at Flathead Lake. But first, our top story. Yellowstone National Park is helping Montana's Native American tribes with bison reintroduction. MTN's John Shearer has the story. In our language, uh, we, when we say today is a good day, we say le on petuki washtelo, and today is definitely a good day. This ceremony at the site of the newly expanded Buffalo Quarantine Facility in Yellowstone National Park marks a dream for the future. And I always talk about how they wanted to get rid of buffalo and consequently get rid of Indians, but the buffalo are still here, we're still here, and we're still fighting to bring them back to, to our culture. They're a big part of us culturally, uh, spiritually. Let's start talking more about restoration and about healing and really everything that this program is about. I fundamentally have a, a serious problem as a superintendent of Yellowstone shipping bison to slaughter. It's probably one of the most unpopular things to the American public and it's something that we need to work together to move away from. To that end, this facility was greatly expanded during the past year, thanks to a half million dollars put up by the park and another 500,000 raised from donations. The fact that we are where we are and the arduous and hard work it has taken to get here shows uh, we can do hard things together. We can um, rebuild, we can make amends and we can gain acceptance. Uh, and that is truly what uh, this moment captures. Now, this event today was as much about thanking and congratulating each other for efforts to save more bison and share them with tribal members. It also seemed like a promise to themselves and to the public to continue to work on that until at some point in the future, perhaps no bison will have to be killed in Yellowstone National Park. I'm John Shearer, MTN News. There are huge economic impacts to Flathead Lake being so low this year. MTN's Emily Brown reports from Big Fork. We probably have 60 boats a day come in. A popular spot on the lake, Saddlehorn Marina sits on the shore of Woods Bay. Traffic on the lake and boat rentals help keep the restaurant busy. Definitely lucky having, you know, 40 feet off the end of the dock here. But Ryder Trent, who helps run the rental business with his father, says the low water levels around the lake are changing things. We have noticed just a, a little bit slower boat traffic and just tourism in general, I feel like, is just a little slower this year. Saddlehorn also owns a marina close by. The water level is way lower on that side of the bridge, which is making owners pull their boats out of the lake. Over half the boats got pulled out back there. We've actually winterized a couple already. Just people are like, it's not worth it. Todd Noble, owner of Flathead Lake Charters, launches his fishing tours from the shallow back marina. We're still getting we're still getting guests out on the lake. Noble's boats are almost touching the ground. The rocks on the lake floor rubbing on the boats could cause serious damage. The other concern we have, of course, is being able to get out of the marina through the very narrow and shallow channel that we have to navigate uh, to get out onto the lake. If the water levels drop any more, then doing business gets harder pulling boats out to find other places on the lake with higher water. We're going to have to launch two boats every day um, and then pull them back out in the afternoon or evening and uh, it's just going to add an immense amount of time <laughs> to, mark, to our schedule. Noble says that in the 10 years he's worked at Flathead Lake Charters, he's never experienced anything like this and wants to know why it's happening. Frustration more than anything because we're not getting the answers that we want from the entities involved. He also wants to know the plan for the future, not only for his business, but for everyone working around Flathead Lake. In Big Fork, Emily Brown, MTN News. Happy Friday, everybody, and TGIF boom as we cruise on into the weekend. Our local forecast coming up, very dry conditions on the way and a chance we could see a whole lot of smoke coming in from Canada. I'll explain coming up here in just a second. But first, what's going on across the 48th, the U.S. forecast today? West to the uh, west coast to the Gulf Coast, dangerous heat wave with at least 
93 million people under excessive heat warnings and heat advisories. That was as of this morning, just boiling across the nation there. Portions of the Northeast, a threat for excessive rainfall in the Central Plains. Severe weather likely today. Look at Kansas City there, an enhanced risk of the possibility of seeing some tornado activity. For us, high pressure for the most part going to try to keep us dry across the weekend. It's also going to suck in that Canadian wildfire smoke. We'll talk about that coming up. At our most trying times. I was a little nervous. The place we often find comfort. I've actually been through a lot with this kid. Is mom. She keeps me on my toes. <laughs> As a dispatcher for Rosebud County, Cammie Rogers has been responding to emergencies. Uh, nine years. But when asked if she's ever taken a call like this. No, no, this was my first. On October 7, 2022, Coal Strip was a bustle. It was homecoming weekend, just got off of school, got off the parade. Um, I was with my friends, and so we decided we were going to take the mine road. Everybody in Coal Strip cruises the mine road, turn around at the dirt road, and head home. That day changed the course of 17 year old Talon Rogers' year. The first thing I noticed is a hit and run. Her car collided with a Rosebud County ambulance heading to another emergency. You know, you see the people that are supposed to help you driving away from you. Driving away, leaving her leg skewered on the metal side rail of the ambulance. So it had shot through the back tire well, shot all the way through the car, and then shot off into my leg. When the ambulance didn't stop, Talon's friend immediately called for another. And on the other side of that call so that was, was mom. <laughs> Getting the help out there was just, you know, my priority. And so I stayed in dispatch mode. Mom didn't really enter into it until after. Wearing heavy on Talon's mind was her injury and her future. One of my first thoughts was track. What's going to happen with track? A decorated high school athlete in the prime of her shot put career Talon was now staring down at the unknown. I didn't get the season I expected, you know. I was mad that it, this had even happened in the first place. The family now headed for a legal battle, alleging that the ambulance was going too fast, it wasn't using its siren, and the driver was negligent. Talon was left on the side of the road with a critical injury, Cami even having to dispatch that same ambulance back to the scene to help her daughter out. I completely feel like there's negligence in it. Talon spent most of the last year simply learning how to stand again, let alone compete. So everything I had known, I had to completely change and critique into my own form to be able to throw what I used to. Ah! There. Finding inspiration better. through her coach yeah. and herself. She's gonna be you know, more resilient moving forward. I think it definitely pushed me to be better, to work at it, to improve my throwing. And at the cap of the season, found herself standing top of the podium at state. So appreciate it more, to appreciate my talent, to appreciate that I could have lost that. She survived it, so that's the important part of this. Up next, Miller's in with another check of the day's weather. Plus, we take you on a walk through the human colon as one of the world's top fundraising relays kicks off today right here in Montana. The MTN Noon News continues right after this.